During one of the unsuccessful offensives of the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Federation in the Kursk region, the Russians lost 17 military vehicles due to mine explosions. It is noted that the Ukrainian approach to planting mines differs from the enemy strategy on the territory of Ukraine, Forbes reports. The commander of the Ukrainian ground forces, General Alexander Pavlyuk, shared that in the nine days since the start of the offensive in the Kursk region, a third of the Russian military vehicles that the occupiers sent in that direction have been blown up by mines, journalists note. The publication emphasized that the only Ukrainian engineering unit in the Kursk region remains the 12th Support Regiment. It is responsible for laying many mines in the region. The Ukrainian approach to laying mines in the Kursk region differs from the strategy of the Russian occupiers, journalists said. Instead of mining a large area, Ukrainian troops are placing mines on several roads leading to the most critical sector on the western side of the Kursk salient. According to journalists, it was this approach to mining that led to the Russian Federation losing more than 1,500 soldiers daily in the war. In addition, Ukrainian troops, despite the enemy's superiority in numbers, were able to organize local counterattacks. Analysts at the Royal United Services Institute in London, Jack Waddling and Nick Reynolds, told reporters that the enemy's heavy losses could be due to difficulties in detecting mines. However, there is another option, Russian intelligence officers are detecting mines, but their commanders are not passing on accurate intelligence to assault groups. This guess is confirmed by Russian propagandists. They reported that soldiers from the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Federation were falsely informed that the road on which Russian equipment was subsequently blown up had come under the control of the occupiers. Media previously wrote that Russia wants to return the Kursk region before possible negotiations, but Ukraine is not going to give in. The Russian Federation fears that this region could become a lever of pressure on the Kremlin. In addition, Reserve Major Alexei Getman told what the Kursk operation gave to Ukraine. According to him, the positive effect is obvious even now. There is no point in expanding the territory of Kursk region controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces, we are not going to annex these territories to Ukraine. Can the Russians push us out of there? Of course, they can, especially if they bring in more forces. We will not be able to hold out in Kursk region like we did near Pokrovsk. We are already avoiding serious military clashes there, we are maneuvering, he said. Russia boasts that it is making gains in Kursk and within Ukraine. However, that belies the fact that Russia is in fact losing incredible quantities of soldiers. At this point, signing up to join the Russian army is signing one's own death sentence, says Jake Bro, according to the Kyiv Post. Jake Bro, who is well known to those who follow Ukraine's war against Russian aggression for his dynamic, interesting and accurate analysis of what is transpiring in Russia's war against Ukraine. Through his battlefield map updates and articulate explanations, the war commentator has developed a strong following that regularly checks in to see what he thinks will happen next. Bro, in this interview with Kyiv Post, explains what internal pressures Russia is now facing that could well lead the world's largest country to a brutal defeat. Bro gives his candid analysis about what outcome the Kremlin is hoping to see following this November's presidential election in the United States and expresses why he is a strong supporter of Vice President Kamala Harris despite the arguments that some Ukraine supporters who back Trump make to argue that the former president would do a better job of helping Ukraine to win. Formerly, Bro was a nuclear and missile operations officer in the United States Air Force for six years where he was in charge of the operations, maintenance and security of the Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missile system. Currently, Bro is a commentator on the war in support of Ukraine and operates a YouTube channel. According to Western assessments, Russian casualties in the war so far tally up to 115,000 killed and 500,000 wounded. The staggering death toll, estimated to be 10 times higher than Soviet losses during the war in Afghanistan, is difficult to verify but is consistent with the independent open source reports. 
Using official reports, online obituaries on social media and images of tombstones, the BBC Russian service with the independent website MediaZona have identified the names of 75,000 dead Russians. They estimate the real tally to be between 113,000 to 160,000 deaths. We've seen a significant increase over the past six months, said a spokesperson at MediaZona. There's a lot of crazy headlines, especially concerning the arrival of these 10,000 or so North Koreans. But I think that uh, Putin has given a hard deadline to his generals. And unlike previous deadlines that they've all failed to meet, this one might not be elastic. And the reason why is I think Putin is trying to retake this territory in Kursk prior to Donald Trump taking office on January 20th. There will be talks. There will be negotiations. I'm not saying they're going to be successful. We don't know what Trump's plan really is. I, I, I honestly think he doesn't have a plan. He's coming up with it now. But Putin doesn't want to talk about Kursk. He doesn't want to talk about Ukraine giving back territory in Russia in exchange for anything else. That is a position to negotiate from weakness, not from strength. This is not what the Russians want. So at the moment, casualties are going insane on the battlefield. Just yesterday, uh, the estimated casualty report for the Russian forces was almost 2,000 soldiers killed, captured, or wounded in a single day. This doesn't feel like progress for the Russians. They're panicking about this chunk of the territory, about 1,000 square kilometers, and they want to pretend like this never the problem of the deficit of junior officers is getting worse in Russia. In connection with this, military training centers for platoon commanders, artillery battery commanders and deputy company commanders are being created on the basis of civilian universities in the Russian Federation. This was reported by the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Russia's large-scale losses at the front among junior officers are forcing the Russian Federation to make further attempts to expand the scope of their training, the GUR stated. It is noted that by the end of 2024, Russia plans to launch 33 new military training centers in addition to the almost 100 existing ones. Such activation of Russian leaders indicates that the personnel crisis of the command staff of the occupied army is worsening, the GUR added. They also emphasized that a junior officer in the Russian army primarily serves as an infantry driver for an assault directly on the battlefield, which explains the high level of losses and the acute shortage of lieutenants in the Russian Federation. Recall, Russia aims to increase its armed forces to 1.5 million personnel, largely to justify higher military spending. The Kremlin, however, faces difficulties achieving this target. As the war in Ukraine continues to cause tremendous casualties, rapidly depleting Russia's supply of manpower. Despite stable enrollment numbers in military academies and recruitment from civil universities, Russia continues to struggle with a shortage of low and mid-ranking officers. The temporary growth of the officer corps, fueled by the partial mobilization, may reverse once mobilization ends. Moscow is expanding military schools and programs for children and teenagers, aiming to create a Soviet-style military system that can be quickly mobilized despite the technological weaknesses of Russia's military-industrial complex. The Russian High Command has been trying to increase recruitment in military colleges, institutes, universities and academies since the second half of the 2010s. These tactics alone, however, will not solve the manpower issue for the foreseeable future. Thus, the Russian military leadership is trying to recruit more future officers from among the students at civil universities and among the existing contracted soldiers and non-commissioned officers. Besides military colleges, universities and institutes, the Kremlin has increased the number of military training centers in Russian civil universities.